our next presenter will be John Zarbell of the San Francisco MoMA. He is the Assistant Curator of Painting and Sculpture. He'll be discussing landscape and ecology in colonial Algeria. In the 19th century, French scientists and governmental officials transformed landscape into <clears throat> of the country that would become to known as Algeria. Artists from painters to illustrators to photographers helped frame the new colonial space and made it apprehensible to the residents of France through the pictorial conventions of landscape. His talk will discuss some of these changes of land and how the developments of this period continue to affect the way we see landscape today. John. Thank you, Rhonda. And um, thanks to the organizers of the conference, uh, particularly Cam Enno, who convinced me to uh, participate. I am uh, delighted to be here and um, delighted to have the opportunity to take what I feel was a relatively esoteric dissertation, um, which has now become a, a book which could be esoteric or not. I'm not totally sure about that. And turn it into something that might have some relevance. Um, it, it's funny that this um, conference is happening here in San Francisco and at Stanford because as I was um, finishing uh, my dissertation, I was uh, working on my footnotes on a, a laptop on the train commuting down to Stanford where I was teaching at the time and living in San Francisco. So I, I have this back and forth. And uh, I was working on this project and, and this guy could see, a guy sat down next to me, he could see I was working away very hard. And uh, he said, so wh what are you doing over there? And he had a wonderful Australian accent. And I said, well, you know, I'm you know, fishing up my dissertation. And I, he asked me what it was. And I said, well, I'm writing about, you know, 19th century French artists who were in Algeria during the 19th century and the, the landscape depictions they, they created. And he said, oh, well, me and my friends were just talking about that at the pub the other night. <laughs> And I said, well, you know, if it were relevant, then it wouldn't be academic. Um, you know, there's a sense of, of, you know, academia having to have a sort of space of its own and, and uh, that we pursue these sort of goals of getting way out there into the, into the ether to, to um, bring back um, obscure paintings like this one, The Desert by Gustave Guillaume. This comes in at the end, um, in fact, of my, uh, my last, the last chapter of my dissertation. But the, the, uh, this is a picture which, you know, very much confronts, I suppose, the idea of rising tides. Um, there's no tides rising in, in this landscape. It's the Sahara, um, and it's a romantic evocation of the Sahara. It's not, um, uh, it, it's not a, a, a kind of space. It's not a kind of living space. Clearly, it's a place to die. Um, and, and being dumped out here um, by a painter is a very curious instance. It's a very difficult thing to wrap your mind around. And the idea of trying to make a landscape painting without any landscape features, I, I found really compelling and interesting. Um, but I spent a long time trying to work backward and trying to figure out um, exactly why I thought this painting was so um, provocative and, and what it was about it that, that I was interested in. And, and uh, in the sense, it, it had to do a lot with my own experiences in the desert um, here in the American Southwest. I grew up in Colorado and spent a lot of time um, as a young artist, particularly running around um, in desert places, taking pictures, making drawings, and trying to come to terms with that uh, obscure sense of space that, that comes from being out in the middle of nowhere and trying to eradicate all the social domains in which we normally operate. Uh, now, of course, I'm in a very different position, working as a curator in a museum. Um, and, and looking back uh, to this work that I've done and thinking about my own um, perspective and my own place in the universe, I, I come to some very different um, uh, solutions. And so what I want to try to talk about today uh, is the way this idea of the empire of landscape, which I'm going to explain in a minute, um, that relates to geopolitical ecology today. Um, because, in effect, as a historian, I worked on the 19th century, the empire of landscape is a notion that not only does society affect artists and, and cause them to do different things, to make different kinds of works, to see different uh, aspects of social change, modernity, for example, um, and, and respond to it in a new way, but, but that artistic activities actually have a kind of influence on the things that we think about um, uh, the places we're in. I focused on landscape um, as a way of getting away, in a sense, from, from the issues uh, of identity that had been so focal 
um, uh, about colonial politics. And to really think about territory, really that raw material of colonialism. You can't have a colony without a space. You can't have a colony without bounding that space. And in order to bound that space, you need a kind of a vernacular to do that. You need a map, in a sense. But you need more than a map, because you need a picture. You need an image. You need a, a sense of space. And landscape is actually um, an artistic structure that provides a kind of blueprint, in a way, for understanding an aesthetic notion of what landscape is. And I'm, I'm using the word aesthetic in a very different way, I think, than Ignacio was, in the sense that um, this is a kind of distancing aesthetic. This is an aesthetic that, that sort of um, uh, has, uh, creates a kind of sense of beauty out of component parts, right? And that's what was so interesting to me, finally, about this picture as a landscape because none of the component parts were there, right? You couldn't make sense of it as a landscape based on, you know, Ray Poussoir trees, um, you know, uh, the kind of horizontal, um, you know, depiction of space, the way the eye drifts back, uh, aerial perspective, which the purples are in the back and the warmer colors are in the front. Um, here, you know, the warmer colors are in the back. Um, it, it, so it, it, it refuted a lot of those ideas. In any case, I'm trying to talk, in a sense, about the way in which artists somehow played a role in the political transformation of colonial Algeria. And the way I see that is related to geopolitics is that here are a bunch of people coming from outside and, and trying to capture a territory, trying to make it into something else. Um, this place was whatever it was before, but when the French are done with it, it becomes Algeria. It's a country, it has a space, it's a place that has a name, it has a kind of government, and it's ruled from outside. It's nothing like the, the, what the people who lived there previous Lee would have done for themselves. It's something that's imposed upon them. And, and uh, that artists play some role in that is, is significant in, in my notion. But um, I want to use that to think about what we're doing with ecology today and how space is being defined externally to us and how we, in a sense, work with it, against it, or through it, in a sense, to try to come to terms with our relationship to the place in which we live. Um, images, I think, play a real important role in that. Um, but nowadays, of course, we're much more engaged in um, aspects of social practice and, and uh, you know, relational aesthetics and all of the different forms that art has taken in the, in the last generation or so um, have been very uh, provocative in terms of offering new opportunities for us um, in the world of art to think about the social domain. <laughs>